Hello Internet, hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about the fact that Valve finally announced the release of Dota 2. In the background you're gonna have a nice little Ursa gameplay ditch. This game was actually pretty awesome, so if you want to watch it, I would definitely appreciate it. I finally got that armlet on Ursa and it's lots of fun. But this video is not about that and it's just gonna be background footage. Just yesterday we had Wall's VP of Marketing, Doug Lombardi, talk to GameSpot about the rumor that's been floating around the internet for a while now. That rumor stated that Dota 2 is gonna get its official release before the International Free. The International Free is held from the August the 7th to August the 11th at the Benoraya Hall in Seattle. This rumor got confirmed, but it doesn't stop there. They also announced a lot of stuff concerning South Korea. Now South Korea is a very eSports centric nation and if you're looking to establish a big eSport game like War of currently is, you cannot leave out South Korea. StarCraft has pretty much gotten to a point of a national sport over there and it's just absolutely, absolutely huge. Dota 2 will now also try to get the same amount of popularity by announcing amateur and pro leagues with an overall of 2 billion Korean something uh, value money, which is the same <laughs> as 1.7 million US dollars. But this is just one of the many many plans they've got for South Korea. I'm just gonna give you a few, but they want all lines and all voices to be localized. They want no different fee policy in Korea. They want no time lag on the updates. They are going big. They really want to have Dota in South Korea. Now let me talk a little bit about price money in esports. If you've got a huge tournament, let's say Dreamhack, it's not really about the price money per se. Dota 2 had the biggest price pool at Dreamhack this year and getting that money is certainly, certainly amazing. But that's not the reason why teams fly in from all over the world. Because if you are realistic and you have to be, it's very unlikely that you actually win that first place. And if you don't win the first place, well, now we are getting into the situation where it's actually very unlikely that you're gonna properly benefit from that and you could have probably made more money just staying at home. The thing that's notable and the thing that's important about big events such as 3MAG is the attention and the prestige you get from ranking highly in such a tournament. A team without a sponsor will certainly be able to pick up a sponsor after winning such a tournament. And a team with a sponsor? Well, what does the sponsor want? A sponsor wants to get his name out there. A sponsor wants to advertise himself. And that sponsor is gonna be able to advertise himself perfectly fine if you manage to win such a tournament because your name will be out there. Now keep in mind that the highest prize pool at Dreamhack this year was for Dota and it was 300,000 SK. This equals about 46,000 US dollars. The International Free currently has got a prize pool of 2.4 million US dollars. Or to say it in a different way, the highest price pool in esports history. Now let's circle back a bit. Dota 2's release just got announced. A lot of players always say that, well, you can get the Dota 2 key anyways, it's so easy, it's so simple, there's like nothing to it. If you don't have one, you're retarded. But honestly, these people aren't the ones that are retarded. Now let me tell you why. The problem with getting a Dota 2 key is just the fact that it requires effort and it requires even the slightest amount of effort. If you give somebody the option of playing a game they already play and that requires no effort from them whatsoever, or playing a new game that they first of all have to get the better key for, well, they are always going to stick to their previous game. Now, I'm of course talking about all of the old Dota players, League of Legends players, Heroes of New York players, everything in the genre. Just removing that entry-level barrier will definitely, definitely get a huge chunk of people to give the game a shot. A lot of people will just go ahead and play the game for the sake of testing out the original, the first MOBA. And it doesn't even stop there. I run a YouTube channel, of course, that's entirely centered around Dota. Of course, you guys already know this. I get a lot of people that ask me for a better key. And it's a really, really high amount, you wouldn't believe it. There are a ton of people out there 
that really want to play Dota, but just don't have a key. Even though everybody always said, well, it's so easy and simple to get one. Well, apparently it's not. Now let's just do a little bit of a roundup of why Wolf is an absolute marketing genius. They are amazing at this. So, what do we have? We have got the name Dota 2. That alone is just so big, so important. Secondly, the game is on Steam. Thirdly, the game is free to play with absolutely no drawbacks. Everything you can buy is entirely cosmetics. Fourthly? Four, fourth? Step four of Wolf's genius marketing. The international is coming up. The biggest tournament in esports history with the highest prize pool ever. I am sorry, but I can't help but be impressed by all of this. This is just set up so perfectly that it just cannot go wrong. With the release of Dota 2, the game will blow up beyond belief. I think that with the release of Dota 2 and once the international is over, the player base will increase exponentially. It's just gonna blow up beyond belief. If I'm completely honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see a constant, I don't know, million players online. I really wouldn't be surprised. The release of Dota 2, however, also, also implies another thing, because currently, Dota 2 is still in beta, and beta implies that the game is not feature complete. It is playable, but not feature complete. And I personally would definitely, definitely agree with that. Now the thing is, if Valve plans on releasing this game pretty soon, does this mean they will make it feature complete before the international? Does this mean we will have all of the Dota heroes? Does this mean we will finally have guilds, which is the one thing I truly, truly want? And will we finally get a re button on the chat wheel? I don't know. But I'm really curious to see what they are gonna make happen with this. If they plan on releasing this game, they better make it feature complete. Because once they do, better no longer is an excuse. No, I'm just gonna guess right now, but this is what I believe that they are going to change before the game gets released. I think they will implement guilds. That is going to be a thing, so I'm quite happy about this announcement because, well, <laughs> it's gonna be coming, Minimis is finally gonna get opened up. But also, I think they will make major improvements on the spectator interface. I would not be surprised if that's one of their primary focuses, simply because currently it's not the greatest, it's good, it's not amazing though. And if you just take a look at most of the recent patches, one of their big things is the spectator interface. Combined with the International 3 coming up, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's one of their primary focuses. But yeah, I don't think they will add all of the heroes into the game. I don't think they consider that to be feature complete because in the end, it's all about constant improvement and constantly adding heroes into the game. So, oh well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating on the video. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. I upload daily Dota 2 content. And, well, I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye!